Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk to you about a few items that I didn't know when I purchased this rig and that the sales folks didn't tell me. So this is kind of a uh, tips and tricks that I figured out. So I hope it's helpful. So let's first talk about the televisions in the rig. Um, seems like you know I, I'm in tech and it took me a second to figure this out so let's assume that you go and where you're at you don't have any cable and you're gonna run off the antenna so what you need to do is let's look up here you see this button right here you need to make sure that it's lit up this means that the antenna is working once it's lit up you come to your, you come right here, you get your remote, you, first of all, we're gonna change the source. Make sure the source is on television. Then we're gonna go and select the menu. You're gonna go over to channel. And right here, you change it from cable to air. Sometimes it knocks you out. Let's go back. Did you do it at a loyalty? Are you paying him back for something? What you need to do is you need to go through. Let me mute that. Let's go back to the menu channel. You need to do an auto scan. What this does is it goes through and it starts looking for the available channels. So after it's scanned every all the channels, you're going to be able to use your standard channel button here to scroll through. Uh, some in some areas it's better than others. So um, I guess this is a uh, digital. So. Now let's uh, assume that you're ready for cable. So you're in a campground, you want to hook up cable. It's one of the most important things to do is to go back here and turn off this switch right here. Turn that off. And then you're going to go through the same thing that we had gone through before. You're going to want to go ahead. Let's change the, go to menu. There we go, we're at menu channel changes to cable and then you're going to want to do uh, the auto scan again start scanning so this is if you're hooked up to cable so let's co cover a little bit about uh, if you want to hook up a DVD player um, mine didn't come with a DVD player so as you can see right here I put one in this is an HDMI splitter. What this does is that it takes uh, an input and it sends it to the three TVs that we have in the rig. So when you play something here, you need to have an HDMI uh, cable go into the input here, and then you need to change the source um, here. And every rig, I think, is a little bit different. You have to figure out, is it one, two, or three? So let's cover a little bit about what's going on up here in the dash. So standard Ford layout. Uh, why don't we focus a little bit on the security? Um, you have your outside sensors. I guess when someone hits the RV, it'll go off. Um, but you also have internal sensors and I noticed a lot of folks are a little bit confused about it. So mine, uh, I had to go into settings and set it up um, to get this to happen. So whenever I leave the RV, you see right here where it says alarm. So you have all sensors or perimeter. So what we do is because we don't want the internal sensors, we switch this to perimeter. If you set it to all, the sensors internally are, these are motion detectors, so they'll go off, especially if you have animals. 
If you notice that in your vehicle you don't get those options when you uh, leave the vehicle, you need to go turn those on. And you can do those by clicking Settings, Advanced Settings, Vehicle, Alarm, and right here. So when I bought the rig, these, this was turned off. So you, for us, we just had to check this, ask on exit. And now that alert pops up every time we uh, leave the vehicle. So one other thing that confused me initially, but not for long, was I saw that we have one gas gauge here. I realized that there's two tanks here, but let's say you want to see the status of both tanks. You're going to want to go up here to display mode and select it. And this is where you get the status of both tanks. So one of the cool features that this has is a uh, Nico mode and it is right here. So as you're driving, you would essentially just press it and you have normal uh, tow and eco and this is if you have some bad weather so oops let's click ok now the one thing I do want to say is let's one thing I figured out you see right down here uh, this uh, icon right here um, certain things are turned off and not functioning if when you start the vehicle it is not perfectly lined up um, this vehicle comes with lane assist and that's what this little icon is right there if you start to swerve out of your lane it'll notify you with some beeps and I you're gonna have to turn that on uh, well you might have to turn that on um, and to turn that on so it is this button right here so that is your lane keep system um, this also plays into the all the collision alerts and stuff like that but you see right there that alert traction control off this happens when it's not level initially i thought it was uh, an issue with the actual rig itself it turns out this is i guess by design when you start it up it has to, the rig has to be completely level in order for a lot of these sensors to calibrate and work so if you see those issues pop up doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong. It just means that when you started up the rig, it wasn't level in order for the sensors to start working. What we have is we have a, uh, you have your engine brake here. So if you click it, so it's just on at all times. Uh, so when you start to go down a hill, it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna immediately turn on. So what you also have is you also have an automatic engine brake. This uses a little, must use some of the sensors. It does a better job. It's not on all the time. Um, if you notice it when you're going down a hill and you want to coast, uh, you just go in and tap the accelerator and you'll find that the engine brake will disengage. So when it comes to the actual radio, there was one thing I couldn't figure out. Maybe you guys can put it in the comment. Let me know if I'm crazy, but there doesn't seem to be a way to browse the FM stations in this Ford. So what we have right here, this changes the actual source. So um, right in there, it took me to what, XM radio or something along those lines. It's not what I, that's not what I wanted. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just clicking back and forth to here uh, and then you have the volumes um, again the the button right here does the same thing it takes you to different sources so watch I'll I'll click it here so if I click that button different sources not sure why that is so if any of you guys know how to set it up so we can just kind of browse when we're in an area that we don't know uh, the, you know what the stations are, please put it in the comments. I'd love to know. So for those of you with an outdoor kitchen, let's talk a little bit about uh, the low point drain valves. I was not aware of this, but the actual low point drain valves, at least on this side, to get there, you have to lower this, 
pull this cheap plastic thing out. And then if you look way in there, you might be able to see it. You can barely get your hands to it, but those are the uh, cold and hot uh, valves that if you turn them, it uh, drains everything out, at least on this end. I'm told that the other side, the low point, is the uh, outdoor shower in the wet bay area. So let's talk a little bit about diesel. Um, I This is my first diesel vehicle, so I couldn't figure out what was going on. The um, After I had filled up, you know, and I went to go put this back, just like a standard gas, I kept pushing on it and it wouldn't click. You can kind of see it's not, oh, there's one click. Um, it just wouldn't click. Uh, and on occasion, it had fallen out. So as I was driving, you know, I'd come and I'd see it like this. So I knew I was doing something wrong. Um, what I didn't know is when you put it in, you turn it a little bit, and as soon as it catches, you pull it out towards you, right? You pull it out and out towards you as you turn it. And this is actually locking it. So this is new for me, not being around diesels. So that's how this locks. It's not that it's broken. It's, you know, with unleaded, you just kind of push hard and turn and it locks. But this one, you get it going and then you pull out towards you while you're twisting and it locks. So let's talk a little bit about the water. Uh, for two weeks, we ran off of the internal, uh, we ran off of the um, pump, our internal water tank, because the hot water wouldn't work when it came to the shower, especially the shower. So what we actually found out was underneath the sink, let me get it set up for you. All right, so this is where the hot water tank is, at least on our model. So you can kind of see down here. Let's see if I can get it good. Oh. Oh, let's see. There we go. So you kind of see there. You see there's a knob right there. So this must be some sort of regulator that was messing with the um, that was messing with the internal pressure where the hot water wouldn't kick on. So make sure that that is all open and you should be good to go. Also, one thing that was kind of uh, new to us a little bit was the how loud the water pump was. Uh, this one seems to be a lot louder than the one in our older RV. There were two things that we did to help quiet it down and we um, we used these two products one we actually wrapped with uh, the lines going in and out when it came to um, the actual pump so it quieted it down quite a bit and just so the pumps not always on we put in an accumulator so uh, I'm gonna there that's it right there so these two items were real quick, real easy, relatively cheap. Uh, so you might want to consider that if the noise of the water pump bugs you guys. So one thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is when you put this into storage, and I don't know if it's an issue with me with this unit itself, but I did notice that when I unplug everything, I'm not sure you guys can see this, uh, the house and you have your chassis batteries, I've noticed that the uh, batteries for the for the ha the house they drain so it, it appears even though you hit the master power switch there's still a draw on the batteries so my recommendation is going to the fuse box and trying to find out what is actually causing that drain the tough thing about the RS 36 is that when the slide is in you can't get to the fuse box not sure why it was designed like this it is created it would have been very easy to put the fuse box uh, at least on one of the other sides of the bed so uh, something to consider when you put it in i would come back put it in storage i'd come back and just make sure the batteries aren't getting drained so 
that pretty much covers it. The one thing I do want to talk about that was a little intimidating to us, our old RV was only about 20 feet long. This one, the RS36 is uh, almost 38 feet long. That's without any bike racks or toads or anything like that. So I was a little worried about uh, driving it. But the one thing that did help when it came, the toughest thing is always right turns. Uh, so what I found, the best thing to do when you make a right turn is to drive up on the line and make the right turn when your seat essentially crosses that that line uh, i find that there's less tail swing but again i'm not an expert in this this is more for novices this is something that helped me is to ensure that i pulled up past you know uh let's say there's a sidewalk on the right and i don't want to hit it obviously so i want to pull up past to where my seat passes the drive, the driveway or sidewalk uh, on the right. So I haven't had any issues by pulling up that far. If I turn earlier, cut it earlier, what I end up doing is I hit the curb. So something for new folks to consider if you're not used to driving uh, these bigger RVs. So thank you, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.